man, it is early. It is not even. Is it Friday? It's Friday. Hey, look, guys. Cappy's one of you. Hey, I'm up working early. Oh, I remember the times I'd have to wake up early and put on a suit and a tie and shave and go and sit there under the thumb of truly incompetent gray-haired boomer bosses. I remember those days. Those days sucked. And uh, and I'd be up. I'd, I'd, I'd be almost pulling into the office by now. <clears throat> yeah, it is, it is a weekday. Anyway, just out of the bed, I have my coffee here with uh, the Truth mug, the Truth Hurts mug with our good friend Jack Napier. And uh, I went, now I'm going to tell you a story. Now. Uh, they say, uh, because out here in the, in the West, uh, they don't use the internet to tell you what's going on. There's no like meetup. There is meetup. There's like events on the internet, but nobody posts their stuff there. So you gotta, it's still word of mouth out here. So I was talking to one of the few, um, I guess friends we could call her. Uh, and she says she knows everything about the Black Hills. Like, oh, you got to go to the the state the state fair. I'm like, I don't know. There was a state fair, and so uh, he says, yeah, it's it's over in Rapid City. You got to go up there. And I say, oh, okay, I'll go to Rapid City. <laughs> and um, I pull up on the main drag on Campbell. Let them look it up. And there's the the hut that they put up where you put put the parking you park on the open field. You know the standard open field. Everyone parks at that same field. You say, oh yeah, you mean an open field? No, I mean the open field. Like when you go to a drive-in movie theater or the uh, state fair, either my state fair or your state fair, that's the exact same field. They just airlift it and move it all over the place. That very flat, matted down pretty much brown dead grass field that's the exact same field the one that you parked in uh, last year you're that's the one we got now over right they flew it in yesterday everyone's right there with their cars and so they say uh i say well, you know i park here like yeah my how much is it it's five dollars i say wait do i also have to pay to park to go into the state fair do i pay you oh that's that's separate that's three bucks <laughs> Damn it, man. <laughs> and, uh, she, and, and she read me. She, she was honest. She's a good gal. Says you could park for free on the other side of the fair. You just, you know, got to walk a little bit. I'm like, okay. So I'll do that. I'll save the five bucks. I'm not old. I'm not crippled. I'm not a fat, disgusting pig American who goes to Walmart and buys extra, extra large. I'm me. I'm one of the last Americans who isn't fat. So I go and drive the car around the south side and I see, oh, here, here's the thing. Here's, here's where I go. And I park on the pavement. This was not the field. This is the pavement. And I walk across this little bridge and there's nothing but a, a wired fence. And there's no obvious place to where the entrance to the fair is. I'm like, where? And then I looked at the fair <clears throat> and it wasn't. It it didn't entice me. I was in the mentality of, okay, they're going to have, this is how bored I was. I'm not kidding, guys. The, the work is done. I'm so bored. And I injured my foot. I was going to go out to Montana and do some hiking and then come back in time for some podcasting with a Joker, no less. And I ended up getting a, a splinter in there. It wasn't the splinter that did the damage. Me trying to dig the darn thing out. I got a hole in the bottom of my foot. Hurts like hell. And so, uh, like, well, okay, I can't go hike. And again, certainly not driving to Montana. And um, just did errands and cleaned up. So I, I was born of, okay, I'll go to the fair. Let's check this out. But the, um, what I was thinking in the, and it probably was on the ground somewhere, was where, okay, here's the prize pig. You all do that. Don't lie. You all go to the state fair. Look at the size of the balls on the pig. And if you haven't had the experience of going to a state fair where they bring in and, and they got the prize pigs, you, you have to see the balls on these pigs. They're the size of bowling balls. That alone is worth going, but I've already seen it. But I also like, okay, you know, Grandma Pinkert's, prize winning jam you know uh maybe some art just seeing the craft the folk put together but instead in somewhere it was there on the grounds i'm sure but instead what i saw was the standard 
carnival circus, shoddy construction, cotton candy, cheese curds, questionably stable, merry-go-round. Um, and I looked at it and I'm like, no, I've been to enough of these. It sucks getting old, man. It, get, it sucks getting old <clears throat> because you're, nothing's new, man. I'd kill to be a kid again. I'd kill to be a little kid again. Not because the extra life expectancy, because like, oh my God, a stick. I've never seen one of these. Wow. A field where they park cars. You're crazy. Who would do such a thing? Look at this. Oh my God. And I'm and I, and I get I threw in the towel at that time. I was like, no, I'm not gonna do this. I I just it, it, but but that then presents okay. Well, what are you gonna do? I ended up going to the gym anyway because <clears throat> you don't need your feet for that. But to get back out, I had to go. It was kind of a weird place. A, a railroad cut off the neighborhood, so you had to kind of revert. But I didn't know it at the time. So I end up this is the long belabored wasting your time to get to the point to say I had to drive through a trailer park. I got a tour of a trailer park. And so I hang a right. And I go into this neighborhood where there's a trailer park. Thinking maybe there's a, an outlet on the other side. And there was not. But I got this tour. And guys, I'm not joking. It was the exception. If you didn't have a nice car in that trailer park. And this was not a nice trailer park, by the way. Now, is it possible that... That people in this trailer park had a lot of money and therefore they were just frugal with their money when it came to housing and they bought really nice fancy cars and trucks. Yes, that's possible, but no, it's not because I was in banking and we all know, especially with the bailouts yesterday and how Americans are, you know, they don't have the money. And I was looking at, at it was it was damn near 80, 85 percent of the homes in this area had nicer cars than I've ever had in my entire life and probably ever will. <clears throat> and I'm looking at it, you know, and, and I don't know what the demographic, but if you're in a, if you're in a trailer, you're not, you're not 19 or 20, right? This is kind of a, when you think people who live in a trailer park, you're thinking failed middle-aged people, right? Again, not to say if you, you know, it could be a very good frugal purchase. I'm not, you know, someone could be sitting on a million bucks, but that's, that's not what it is. The frugality would then spill over into your vehicle choice. You would get something sensible. I'm looking at sports cars, fancy trucks. Do da do like doodly pick up truck. And I could have been like, what, what, how, why? And I, when we know why, we know, <clears throat> we know why, because Americans, I don't know about the rest of the world, but Americans have been so successfully brainwashed into thinking that a vehicle and, and the convey, not the real, but the conveyed status that vehicle conveys is still the most important thing. And especially now with the bailouts for the student loans and all this other stuff, I'm realizing no one ever really leaves middle school. No one does. High school is even too high end. At least in high school, people are kind of like, oh crap, that adult thing's coming around. Middle school, no. It's truly Lord of the Flies there. <clears throat> it's it's still, and I, I don't know what middle school is like today or what it's been like for the past 30 years. But I'm starting to believe it's it wasn't any different than when I went. You had to have this brand name clothes. You had to have this brand name shoes. You had to do the thing everybody else was doing. Otherwise, you'd have to get in fights. You weren't cool. Oh, no. I'm not cool with a bunch of sophomore 13-year-olds. And then the whole promise back when we were younger was like, well, that will end. That'll change, said the spoke. Spake the boomer uh, parents. Don't worry, everything gets better in college. Spake the boomer parents. And you'll find girls, and girls will be really smart, and they'll really like you. Spake the boomer parents. <laughs> and then you'll get a job, and then everything will be worse. Spake the boomer parents. <laughs> and none of that came true. Because no one, no one ever left middle school. And so here I'm, I'm driving my piece of crap truck that's older than most of your children. And I'm looking, I'm like, it doesn't end. 
it doesn't end. And if you go, if you get Batch of Pat Economics or Poor Richard's Retirement, either ones, I should have linked to it below. <clears throat> if, if you got either, either one, there's, there's chapters or segments in there that talk about particularly men. Women will piss away their money on stupid college degrees to fake like they're smart for four years. That's basically what, what college is now. It, it's an imaginary world. It's like going to Disneyland for women. Except they think they're intelligent because they're getting there. Oh, I'm studying sociology and I'm such a strong, independent woman. I need a bailout. All right. So it's kind of make believe for them. And men, men don't. Men don't major in stupid crap or or, or delusional as women are anywhere near degree as, as in college. But <clears throat> but almost penny for penny, men make the equally stupid financial decision when it comes to cars and automobiles. And I've seen the money. I've seen the, the the numbers. I did the numbers. If you go get poor Rich's retirement, I reverse engineer figures. And do you know that if you pay cash for cars, you do not lease. You do not rent or uh, finance a car. You will save the equivalent of three quarters of retirement of an adequate retirement for one person. Like if you just go and get used vehicles. If you give up this middle school American BS that I have to, it even, it even allow me to divert just a little bit to talk about the severity of, of this delusion. It's even beyond like trying to be popular in public to a, high, to a middle school level. I think it really is the only thing a lot of these people got like, look at my car. How about good kids? How about look at my body? I'm not saying you're walking around naked, but how about look at me? I'm in shape. How about look at me? I've I've comported myself with the amount of uh, fashion and decorum. So when I, and I don't say you have to be dressed like Cary Grant or Audrey Hepburn, but you know, I, I I think about how low the standards are now to to see a woman that is not overweight and is in a a well put together dress. Imagine how rare it is to see a man who isn't dressed like a flat brim hat clown. With sweatpants. That is more important and way cheaper, by the way. <clears throat> you get great clothes at Goodwill and Walmart. That is making a much more uh, impactful and positive statement is how you carry yourself in public than the vehicle you drive. But I think that people, I think it's that's the finish line. Like the final end all be all status symbol is the vehicle you own. And to people with stupid amounts of money or who have access to borrow stupid amounts of money, they go with more subtle and nuanced things like Louis Vuitton handbags and Jimmy Choo shoes, which obviously is not a thing in Rapid C. I guess the money just isn't out here. So for the commoner, for the truly average person, not rich, not upper middle income, truly average. You can, if you want to sacrifice and slave your life away to 12.75% APR at the dealership and get yourself a double die do dang diggly dangly pick up your head or sports cars of, of various types, <clears throat> all nicer than mine. And, and that is their value structure. That's their value system. Look at me. I'm in my car. That's it. The 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 life circles around the car. I guess I don't see it here in, in uh, the West and rural areas. <clears throat> the soccer mom, suburbanite soccer mom, that's a whole new level of fabricated debt financed wealth. Where wifey poo, they they man, they love their Range Rovers. They love their Range Rovers and their Lexuses. But I don't see a lot of that out here. It's pickup trucks and sports cars. And so anyway, get getting back to it. If if you don't do that, if you just get a vehicle for transportation, you will have enough money, three quarters of the money saved up by the time you're sixty five that you could re, you can't retire in three quarters, but. You're more than halfway there. And what I got a kick out of was the contradiction. You got this, you know, lipstick on a pig doing your weaves and nails on a, a big fat black woman. All right. The girls go out and you're getting all party up. It's like you're 300 pounds. What are you putting your weave? By the way, weaves are expensive in the nails. 
And now you got you got a fancy vehicle in a trailer park. I'm kind of like that that's not it's <laughs> not wealth. You're not okay, you you might convey to a truly stupid person on the street, you got money or you got a sweet ride. I guess you do have a sweet ride, but the image you're trying to present is no more valid than the one you're presenting in middle school. You didn't even have your own money in middle school. <clears throat> and the thing with middle school is like it didn't cost you nothing. Your parents paid for the clothes, likely. You weren't financing your clothes at 12.75 APR. But now you are as a full-grown adult. And, and again, as I said before, I don't think it's 18, 19, 20-year-olds living in the trailer park. I think it's 40, 50, 60-year-olds living in the trailer park. And you're still playing this game? Except it's not with a $30 shirt. I mean, I guess 50 is more expensive. It's not like a $50 shirt at whatever fancy outlet mall, <clears throat> Old Navy or Banana Republic or whatever the hell it is. It's a $50,000 vehicle. That is going to cripple your finances and prevent you from retiring. <laughs> and there, there I am. You live in one step above government housing. You're two steps above homeless. But you got a fancy <laughs> or sports car. And <clears throat> I, I bring it up for two reasons here. One... In my audience, I keep getting you young, dumb boys. It's it's 40%. When I get a finance-based type of question, oh, I'm in a I'm in financial situation X. All right. Um, how do I get out of financial situation X? All right. And I look and I I got a car loan. <sighs> Guys, cars are for transportation. That's it. That's all it is. And then you're like, oh, what do I do? I mean, and one guy, very recently, I got a truck loan and I live at home. And and so for that conclusion, to, for, to that point, boys, getting a fancy car does not get you laid. Unless you have a purely top of the line vehicle like a lamborghini and even then talk to rich cooper he'll tell you that it just it gets you more attention from boys because they've never seen and they're interested in cars but it does not get you laid and by the way if you want to get laid for one one hundredth the price you can go and pay a, for one car payment you can get laid every month by a very high-end lady of the evening and a, and a different girl every time to the point you probably be sick of it you come and so, you know, really, guys, the car does. Not, a car will not get you the girl, sir. The truck will not get you the girl, sir. And I'm coming up on, on what a third generation of people getting the driver's license. Well, Zoomers and millennials, maybe. <laughs> get the joke. See, because you all still don't have a driver's license, right? You get that? See what I did? Eh? Yeah. <clears throat> called humor uh but before you dumb boys graduate from college and you're off for the love of god don't get a fancy car don't get a fancy truck get a reliable used vehicle that's that's what you need get two so when one breaks down you got another one you can wrench on the other i wrote a hole here i'll show the book anyway <clears throat> Patrick Pat Economics, there's an entire chapter on purchasing vehicles in here. It may be a bit dated, but the, the process and the technique is still the same. You will more than save the money you drop on this book just reading that one. You could read that one chapter and throw away the book for all I care. You'll, you'll make your money back probably a thousandfold. Matter of fact, I know a thousandfold because cars are so expensive now. <clears throat> so that's one. And that too, ladies, when we loop you in here, uh, for those of you who want to play the game where you have to have your Range Rover and, and play that game, uh, there's no value in a vehicle, none. It's a tool. There's no status. And you're not fooling anyone. Everybody else knows because they're playing the same game. 
I wish I had I'd uh, ran into uh, my psychotic buddy in uh, Denver before I wrote this book because I got to witness the Whispering Willows or the prestigious pines, whatever the hell they named their uh, suburbanite development. <clears throat> A fascinating insight into what what you all think is upper middle class or rich people, and it's not. It's not, guys. I've seen. I've peered behind the curtain. I've seen their tax returns. I've seen their balance sheets. There are so few people in the United States that are actually wealthy. And what you all think is wealth, I'll put it, this I knew long ago. Let's say you're here. I'm, I'm being deadly serious. You're driving down the road. You see somebody driving by uh, with a brand new or, or a, no more than a two-year-old Mercedes. Actually, it could be more than two years old. You see a, a nice-looking Mercedes, all right? 98% of the time that person can't afford it, it's borrowed. That's not a rich person. That is somebody who didn't even have, have money and borrowed other people's money to buy that car. They are not rich. Ladies, <clears throat> by the way, you're looking for a rich man. Don't go after a guy who's got a fancy car. He doesn't have money. He has the car. Unless you want to play the status game. But getting back to the point I was making, uh, since everyone is doing it, deep down inside, everyone knows that, oh, you have a fancy truck, you have a fancy car, doesn't mean you have money. And we keep playing this middle school game where we add uh, intrinsic value. We add value to someone because they have the fancy shirt or they have the fancy car. And it's like, oh, look, you got the car. Oh, they're popular. It's like, no, that person doesn't have anything. We never abandoned middle school. We never replaced the middle school value system with an adult one that's based in the real world. But what's going to happen, what's going to happen is what, probably what's going to happen to everyone in the trailer park. Maybe not. Maybe these people legit have, you know, they're, they're kind of like me. They, you know, I don't have fancy cars. I don't have a big house. But, you know, I, got, I do have a savings. You know, I, I do have equity in my home. Uh, and that is, you're going to have to work till you're dead. You will not retire. And we're going to see it happen <clears throat> with the boomers right on that precipice where these boomers were all materialists and then save up uh, for enough for money. I'll be really curious when they get to that point where whether you only got six months left to live or you only got five years left to live, but you're no longer able to work because you're just too old and frail. That's That's going to happen. That's going to start happening pretty soon. And you didn't save up any money for your old and frail and unable to work days. What's that going to be like? And on top of it, criticize the boomers as much as you want. They're not the most obese generation. I'm going to be very curious what's going to happen to, to younger successive generations where every other generation has gotten fatter and fatter and fatter. Where obviously the youngest generation, which I guess would be alpha adjusted for age because they're still kids or not adults yet. <clears throat> but Gen Z, obviously. You know, that it's not going to be Grandma Tilly tended her yard and, and died as an 88 year old boomer. And, and then she kept going strong, but uh, she got whatever the a disease at, at the age of 87 and a half. And the last six months were if we had to kind of take care of her. All right. Well, all of a sudden, your grandma or grandpa Tanner, you know, let's take a millennial kid now, fast forward. Is he going to make it to 87 and a half and then the last six months need help? Or is he going to make it to 60? He's got diabetes. He's got to amputate his foot. And now we're pushing him around in a wheelchair. Not for the next six months, but for the next 20 years. Hey, but you know what? Tanner had a cool pickup chair. He, he had other frivolous, pointless things. He had no savings. <clears throat> Lived in the trailer park. Probably didn't even have that paid off. Probably had that. Probably took a home equity loan out of the truck. I saw it. I saw it in Wyoming. But at least they had to pick a player. For what? <laughs> and when is it? When does that middle school end? Does it end like when everybody's kind of ugly then? Like, say, 55, no one's really attractive anymore. Unless you're like the world's most interesting man. You know, you pull off a... Uh, that that uh, silver fox guy, the middle-aged man who's got that, you know, uh, like a James Bond type. So, sorry, can we admit 55? That's it. Not one single petal on the bloom for the ladies there. 55, uh-uh. Unless you look like Christine Brinkley or uh, 
Oh, Selma Hayek looks phenomenal for a 53-year-old. Oh, my God. Look up Selma. That's Gen X, boy. That's our girl over there. <clears throat> you guys have your Billy Ellish. Holy puke bucket. Oh, my God. What a disgusting. Oh. Ugh. You have Billy Ellish. We'll take Selma Hayek. We'll take uh, Jennifer Aniston. She looks great for 50-whatever she is now. Right, uh, but except for those exceptionally few and rare, can we admit the game is over? What you still gonna be driving a fancy pickup truck at at, at fifty seven sixty five? Is that the game you're gonna play? <clears throat> so there you go. Anyway, um, so I I can't get people. I could get some of you guys to do it. I still seemingly can't get you boys on addicted to dropping money on cars. Uh, but I did uh, want to point out that, you know, for those willing to listen, that's that's not winning. The, the, I'm trying to dislodge the undeserved and ludicrous and irrational status and prestige. The prominent premier position, your vehicle holds in American society. I want to dislodge it and get it out. For my audience, of course, I'm not going to get other people to listen to me. <clears throat> I'm not going to get people to leave middle school. That's all they got. You know, what are they supposed to do? Brag about their careers? I don't know, a hair salon or something? Heck, you'd be happy with the hair salons. They at least got a job. Everyone else living off of stimmy checks or their parents' equity in their home. What's a reverse mortgage? But for my audience, can you guys knock it off? Can you stop it? And by the way, if you have trouble, like you just like, did, I don't know what it is. The programming, the addiction, starting at three years old, you guys are watching Teletubbies. That's about the generation. All right. If you were three years old and you're a, roughly a 30 odd year old adult today, you were tuning into the Teletubbies and they started marketing. They started selling and they started programming your brain that you needed stuff. You needed things. And now it's crippling you and it will ruin your life. All right. May I recommend it's linked below my course on minimalism. <clears throat> for the for the price of one car payment, less than one car payment. Isn't the average car payment 700 bucks today? Hang on. What is the average car payment? 733 bucks. <laughs> Donovan Sharp was telling me, like, you got to, you got to, for that, because I put together the, the thing and it, it's a six, a seven, eight hour seminar, deep dive on psychology of minimalism and how to achieve minimalism and get your control, your spending under control. Donovan's like, oh, yeah, you got to charge like, you know, $700. I'm like, no, no, no. He's like, well, don't charge anything less than, you know, five. And I did, but then they did sales tax. So I dropped down to 450. And I thought, well, that, that's a bit pricey. But okay, he knows what he's doing. And he did. He was right. And and now I don't feel a single ounce of pain charging four fifty plus tax. Depends on your state, so five hundred roughly. I don't feel a single ounce of pain charging you guys that much. Not you guys, but whoever needs to take it. Why? Because for less than one car payment, your car payments forever will go away. It will drastically improve your finances. You won't be one of these washed up douchebags with a truck that you can't afford, fancy old truck in some yard littered trailer park. You might actually have your financial act together. You won't be living paycheck to paycheck. You won't be stressed out anymore about money. And so that course is available now. It's open for enrollment for the next five days, four and a half days. It closes at the end of the month. Um, <clears throat> you have 45 days to complete the course if you'd like. I don't care if you take it or not. Or I, I, I care if you take it. I care if I get your money. Hell yeah. I guess I do also care that you would take the course. But above all else, I care that you do what's in the course, which is one other reason I charge so much for it. So you got some skin in the game and you pay the F attention. How many of you didn't pay attention to school, not only because it was boring, but you weren't paying for it? How many of you went to college and paid a little bit more attention because maybe you were paying for it? How many of you are a millennial or a Zoomer and just got your student loans bailed out and didn't pay attention anyway? So strong and brave and amazing and independent. <laughs> so if, if guys 
can I please prevent you from ending up like 40% of my finance clients where you go and you get a car and more directly since your ultimate point is to get girls, please just go pay for it. It's a lot cheaper. I know that's that's politically incorrect, but I don't care. That's the financial reality. And now it's becoming more and more socially acceptable because it's brave and empowering for women to do. Go go read the Seeking Arrangement website. Go go read the website. All right. You want the girl saw? Just go pay for it. It's uh, the the be blunt. That's the the short version. <clears throat> but if you want your financial act put together, it you cannot get your financial act together. You cannot have any savings until you learn to get your spending under control. And that's what the Achieving Minimalism course does. It gives you the wherewithal to do so. The, the hard part is not how do you quit smoking? Will you stop smoking cigarettes? How do I lose weight? Will you eat less and you work out more? It's getting the wherewithal to do so. And for whatever reason, we need the wherewithal to unlodge and dislodge this brainwashing and programming. We all got to be consumerists and, 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 and materialists. Even if it cripples and prevents you from having a, a, a stable financial life. <clears throat> so there you go. The link is down below. Sign up now because the enrollment will end at the end of the month. I did see some super chats. Uh, hey, Erica Shanta Williams from Erica's Classy Climb. Please follow her. Vietnamese gang in Houston just stole $4 million in catalytic converters, car, our transportation, but also liability if you live in the hood. $4 million in catalytic converters? How big is that gang? $4 million you divide by, what do you get for a catalytic converter? Like 200 bucks? So two off the million thousand. 10,000, 40,000. So 20,000 catalytic converters, if I did the math right. I, well, that's another point. Erica, you're right about that. Not that the trailer park is the hood, but there is a higher element of crime there. And you don't have a garage. And you got this fan. I And I'd imagine, I'd imagine the, a fancier car, the catalytic converter costs more, right? Not even because the catalytic converter itself costs more, but because you got to remove all the whoozy wits and the gadgets and the fizzle pops. Oh, it's got this electrical system. We got to remove that. <clears throat> and now you're looking at to install a $200 catalytic converter costs $1,700 in labor. There's got to be a way to like put razor blades on the catalytic converter. <clears throat> ba, 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 ba. Thanks, Eric. Anyway, follow Erica's classy climb. Michael Worley, five bucks. My friend is an AMG and Mercedes mechanic, makes six figs, but spends his money on an AMG's and Rolls Royce. Um, what's AMG? Is AMG British? <laughs> I have the opinion British cars are even worse. At least the Germans are. In theory, they're engineered right, but to repair them are just as expensive because they had to be cute with all the tools they made. By the way, gentlemen, don't get uh, German cars. Absolutely do not get German cars. New and definitely not used. Do not get used German cars. Absolutely not. Wiz Division Productions, regular guy here. Five bucks, Ford F-150, Raptor Eagle, Diesel, Weasel, Wheeling, and Dan Cousin feeling Dude Bro Penis Extended Pickup Shit. Who dang? <laughs> you gotta come out west to look at it. You'll tell, like, you'll tell who the real cowboys are because their truck has stuff in it. And their truck is all dirty and, and, and they're hauling something with. Those are the real workers, those are you. Uh, and that, which which I will I will grant credit out here in the West. Usually nine out of ten times your pickup trucks are being used for legit no joke deals. They're hauling something. They're dirty. A lot of trade. A lot of people work in fields, ranching, all that other stuff. You go to any major city burbs. <laughs> what do you do? I'm a project manager. Why do you have a diesel power truck? Like why? So we can take her boat to the lake. <laughs> Do you, do you even have 
land that you till are using? No, it's my commute car. Oh, you're so pretty. You're so pretty and shiny. But you got your MVA. Erica Williams, classy climb smartphone money for 10 generous stars. Friends, grandma is going to 100, going on 100, been skinny her whole life. Husband died 40 years ago and left a great insurance and a pension. All her kids and grandchildren is overweight, worth, worst health. Yep. It's it's not even obviously Grandma Tilly is not staying thin to go get herself some dick. I maybe maybe she's sexually active. And God bless America if she is. That'd be awesome actually. That'd be great. Go get them, Grandma. Um, it, it to to live, to not be crippled. I see my old man. My old man. I he tells about. Um, you know, people his age, they're they're staring down the last inning. They got an, an out or two in the bottom of the ninth. And these people um are overweight. And you know what comes with overweight? Just being crippled. That's what comes with overweight. Plus age, you're gonna be crippled. My old man, yeah, he's had health problem, he's old, but he can still run, still in shape. He's not he he's out there. <clears throat> and my grandma, God bless her, she's still alive too. Um, you know, woman's 95, so ain't she ain't running no marathons, but she goes out, she plays her cards, she swindles people out of money. Oh, she does it so well. Just like, well, oh, I'm just an old grandma lady, 95. I don't know where I am. Still has the mind of a computer and knows the calculations and the statistics, and she will take your money. But pick pick your card game. She'll take your money. She knows exactly what she's doing. It's all an act. Just this frail old girl. What means she's old? She's frail. But her mind is, is there as always. Don't play cards with my grandma. She'll she knows exactly what she and she'll just be so polite when she takes your five dollars. Mexi man and cheese, five bucks. Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. Get that shot of excitement that you bought a new product. And then when it goes away in maybe an hour, then think about next product. Whatever you do, though, whatever you do, <clears throat> don't get in shape and have sex. Don't do that. Don't be sexy. Don't seduce your husband. Men, don't hit the gym and don't get jacked for your girlfriend or pleasure her in bed. Whatever you people do, don't lose weight and have sex because that might give some, some people like vice. That might give people a healthy vice. We wouldn't want that. Don't lose weight, ladies. Don't be sick. Don't dress up in the lingerie and, and wait for your husband or your boyfriend to come home. Don't do that. Why, then you might have fun that afternoon. You all should go get drunk and do some pot. That's much better. It's much better. Was the Vision Productions five bucks? Followed by Batch of Pad Economics. Followed Batch of Pad Economics. Bought a 99 Toyota Camry under 5,000 cash, learning how to do basic maintenance to try not to be millennial. You're not. You're not. Wisdom. Like, you. You got a job? I mean, now the millennials are getting old enough. They all kind of have to have jobs. It is funny that their money now, even though they got still money, is going to go help bail out Gen Z now, too. That's pretty funny. And some Xers, too. There's some old farts that have student loan debts. Um, but uh, So even they are now being forced to get put, uh, real jobs. But yeah, man, you bought a car for 5K cash. You got a job. Do you have no debt? Are you aware how the economy works that you can't major in fluffy bunny studies and you need some kind of real skill or trade? Well, then you're not a millennial. Do you live at home? In fairness to the millennials, that that's you know, most millennials don't live at home. I mean, they are pushing 40 now. But it's it's I think that will now, you know, they all made the funny okay boomer. You know, a boomer is a, a definition that isn't necessarily age related. The millennial is going to be the same pejorative. Uh, AMC equals higher division of Mercedes. Okay. Thank you, Google Monster. Well, there's a higher division than it. Mercedes isn't high end enough. The AMG is higher class than that. Holy small penis, Batman. Greg Abrams, five bucks. It is the slap in the face to the human race to impregnate these women in the West. I got a vasectomy at 26. Best decision I ever made. Yep. 
Yep. See, it also presumes you're having sex, though, too. See, I was having sex, obviously. I still do. That's why. I had, but, I mean, if you're not having sex and you're like, no, I'm, I'm never going to be dealing with women. Okay, well, there you go. That, you may not even need the vasectomy. But if you are sexually active, you should probably get a vasectomy, yes. Taboo smash, 10 bucks. <clears throat> One of the other issues is the shaming who come when you decide to do the right thing financially, which shocks me, the shaming came from my parents who live paycheck to paycheck. Um, yeah, this is crabs in the bucket. It's commonplace in pretty every community. Mine was not so much crabs in the bucket, but people would, uh, even, even, you know, well-to-do, and by well-to-do, I mean their parents kind of help them with everything, white people in in minnesota because there's not really much more than white people though that's changing now you're gonna get your diversity minnesota you're gonna get it um they were like dude why don't you just get a nice car why don't you get a nice man why don't you drive two pieces of junk now 20 25 years later people are like oh i see what you're doing yeah how's that mortgage oh no i paid cash for that oh no that paid cash for that oh no i have no credit card debt oh what what am I doing? Oh what what am oh what my me? Oh you're asking me what Aaron Clary's plans are today. I was gonna go drive to Montana and go hike until I got a sliver in my foot. And then I had to dig it out. And now there's a, a big gaping hole in my foot. But that's what I was gonna do. Today I'm gonna go yell at the internet, promote my minimalism course in my pajamas, have some coffee, <clears throat> maybe look at the pond. We had some rain yesterday, so now the stream is is kicking in and there's I'm I'm gonna I it's weird what you schedule your life around. Like, oh, there, there's water coming down the stream. I'm going to sit and listen to it. Then I'm going to go to the gym and I might go to the cigar lounge. Might chill out. Might do. What am I doing? What are you doing? Oh, oh, you have to go to work. Isn't that nice? I, I woke up at 730 and still in my pajamas at nine. Oh, you were at the office, huh? Oh. Oh, you had to deal with the kids, huh? Yeah, remember when you all thought I was funny getting a vasectomy? Yeah, you thought that I was crazy, huh? Yeah, those kids, they, they don't take care of themselves at five, huh? Oh, and there's no school. You can't drop them off at the daytime, at the lifetime babysitter operator. You got to deal. Oh, man, that's got to suck raising your own kids. Tell me about it. I don't know, you gotta, you're going to have to tell me about it because I don't know what that's like. Oh, and you got to get back. Oh. Oh, yeah. He can't come out because it's not in the budget. Oh, what's not in the budget? Oh, the money isn't in the budget. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Well, no. Hey, remember 20, 25 years ago when you told me to loosen up and go sign a mortgage, essentially, for a car that was a depreciating va asset? Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Don't take my minimalism course. What the hell do I know? Shink, shink. Yeah, so that is very common. Uh, it's certainly more common in, in lower classes, whether you're just poor. Certainly the black community, if like you start going to college or starting a business or getting a job. Um, what was the other one? Oh, um, uh, only because it's more common out here. The uh, the Indian community, Indian com uh, American Indian community. We don't have a bunch of people from India living here. We have American Indians, the real ones. <clears throat> I'm kidding. Just just get the sand out of your hoo ha. Relax, everyone. Um, yeah, like if if you're a industrious young man or woman on the reservation they just immediately although it depends on the reservation different reservation we're talking pine ridge uh yeah like anyone who tries to be successful they hate it they'll, they'll bring you down uh what shocked me the shaming came from my parents live paycheck yeah no your, your parent look guys if you're in america your parents are not the best i'm not saying they're abusive i'm not saying they're evil people they're just not the best Usually, there I have a lot of this, uh, particularly within black community, young black men. Well, my parents say this that I shouldn't. I'm like, are your parents successful or rich? No, they're divorced or they're never married and they're poor. How about you tell them to shut the f up? You know, don't listen to loser parents. 
<clears throat> you know, God Almighty, parents are still laying degrees of good degree, good to college. Even in light now that we just bailed everyone, uh, go to college, uh, passion. Stop listening to your parents. And don't pay, what, $400 a credit. Just pay $500 for a minimalism course, and you'll be, for, trust you and me, that 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 one eight-hour course, however long it is, is better than a four-year college degree, typically. <laughs> um, Yeah, don't, don't listen. Don't, don't listen to American parents. Please don't listen to American parents. Mike Oxmall, that's an interesting name. Five Australian dollars. Chad at work didn't even have a driver's license. I had a girl offering to drive him home as an excuse to go to his home. Yeah, but Chad is T-Rash. Mike, Mike, that he's T-Rash. That's T-Rash. He goes by Chad, but his name is really T-Rash. I bet you Chad's a good-looking dude, right? There's, there's that sweet spot <clears throat> where you don't have your driver's license, you got a little bit of a criminal record, but you got six-pack abs, and you don't care about the womans. You will get, the girls will pay for your rent. They will. You know that type like, how do I get, how do I get hooked up with a girl that pays my rent? You got to be T-Rash. Where is he? We have a guy uh, who goes by T-Rash and he has to write an art. He has to write a book. He has to write a book on how to be T-Rash. Think about that, man. If you could skip college, you could skip just how to, how to get women to pay for your rent. There's a book, <laughs> a T-Rash series. How to get women to pay for your rent by T Rash. How to get women to pay for your car by T. How to get women to drive you places by T Rash. How to get women to pay for your college by T Rash. Scott Lutke, five bucks. Car loans only make sense if run a business because if making you money, it's paying for itself. It's also a tax write off, right? And you could you could finance a car if you want, but the car's still tax deductible when you pay cash for it. I, I don't know. Here's here's the here's another thing. It's very simple. Loans are a pain in the ass. Every year you got this chore where you got to cut a check. Every it's it's there every month, or it's automatically withdrawn. Why not now worry about it? Why not every month? You think I worry? Oh, I, I don't know if I got enough money in my account to pay for my bills. I ain't got no bill. I mean, I got bills. I, you know, what do I? You know, utilities, and I have a credit card bill. But I'm not stupid enough to go finance a car to where now I don't know if I got enough money in my account every month. Greg Adams had a great <clears throat> observation about these like end of the month. Notice how many women come out and start talking to you. Why? Because they don't have enough money in their account at the end of the month. And like, hey, can you help out? It's a phenomena I haven't seen or witnessed, but he he has. B, five reals, British, uh, not British, um, <clears throat> Brazilian reals. Should I do dentistry and programming on the side or go all the way with computer science? Just do computer science. It's remote dentistry. You got to be there. And if, if you're in the United States, I don't know wh where you are, if you're in Brazil, what country you're in. Um, I know dentists and the, uh, it, it's not just, you could go work for a dentist and you can make okay money, but if you want to be your, your own dentist, heading, setting up your own shop is a royal nightmare. I'd be do, uh, doing computer science. I don't know, unless you have a passion for dentistry, like, you know, you're like that elf in Frosty the Snowman where he just wanted to be a dentist. Okay, well, I mean, I guess go be a dentist then. Macho Toxico, I'll be on his channel later on tonight at, uh, no, this afternoon. 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, Aaron, will you do a live for the Brazilian people later? Yeah. Aren't we doing that? Aren't we, aren't we doing the thing? My only problem is I don't speak Portuguese. That's the paradox we face. Uh, yeah, I'm going live with Macho Toxico later on this evening. Uh, 10 p.m. United Kingdom time. It'll be 3 p.m. Mountain Time here. Um, yeah, we'll be going live. So in Brazil, because Brazil shoots out. It shoots out to the east. It is not directly south of the United States. It's to the southeast of the United States. So they're on like an Atlantic time. So it'll be 5, 6 p.m. It'll be evening for those at least on the coast of Brazil. We got to figure out how to overcome that uh, Portuguese thing. Because <clears throat> I, don't, I don't speak it. So it'll be in English. 
hopefully some of our Portuguese speaking brothers, whether you're in Portugal or Brazil or Africa will translate. RS 501 blue. Uh, yell at some clouds and sip a rooster booster with Jack. I will. I got a supply of rooster booster because Chad's uh, not, not Chad and Tyrone. I mean, Chad Elkham's. Uh, his candidate is finally mailing me some rooster booster like like they said they would 10 years ago. Be tall, young, and attractive. Five bucks. Good, good handle. Maybe if the guy is in a Bugatti, girls might be interested. But even then, I'm still doubtful. Um, yeah, they have those videos and girls will respond to it. Uh, it also helps if you're a good looking guy, too. Um, but a Bugatti, guys, buy a house. Look, guys, guys, if you don't believe, I know, I know the impetus, the origins of <clears throat> you getting these fancy vehicles is you think it's going to get you some tail. Go read the book of numbers. Okay. Analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women. You can also read the book of numbers, the book in the Bible. That's not going to hurt you either. All right. But the, the financial one, analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women, please go read it. And then you go look at the statistics. You say, is a is a 1.5% chance of finding marriage material women worth me going into slavery, essentially, for the rest of my life for vehicles that are fancy for at most five years? Then I got to get a new one? It, I'll tell you it's not, but if you still need to see the statistics, those two products I have, the Book of Numbers and then my Minimalism course, Man, you'd be amazed. I mean, you're not going to be rich. I mean, you might. It, it, it could happen. I'm, I won't discount that. But you're not going to be poor anymore. Do you want to not be poor? Do you want to not worry about money? You do. It can end in a week. Take the freaking class. Wiz Division Productions, five bucks. T Resh crushed his enemies, saw them driven before him, and heard their lamentations of their women. <laughs> Where is there is a guy? I, I think he's real, though. It's like his avatar is a, a picture of a black dude, totally jacked. He's posing, showing his abs. I hope it actually is him. Because then, dude, you put all the hard work into it, right? Even if you weren't T Rash, like you just a uh, really jacked black dude, you got the. You know, you could do thug notes. The guy who does thug notes, <clears throat> he, I think he has a PhD in literature and <clears throat> a black guy, but he dresses with the do-rag and everything and puts on the accent and it, it works. It's, he it, it does, he does really good literature reviews of books, but he does it from a gangster uh, style. You could do this. You could be Poindexter. You could have your nerdy glasses. You could be working for uh, SpaceX or something. Don't tell anyone that. Put on the do rag, put your hat on backwards, have your pants go down, and talk about T Rash. Well, he becomes a multi millionaire bestseller. Oprah reads his book. And then the scandal is like he's an engineer at NASA. He's got a wife. He's been happily married. He goes to church. <laughs> no, don't tell anyone that. Hide that part about you. Oh, no, T Rash. Oh, yeah, I, th I think he went to. To prison for murder. Yeah. Yeah. He deals drugs on the side. Yeah. Oh, no. He's not that mild mannered CPA accountant that makes a quarter million a year with his own accounting firm living in a in an upper scale neighborhood. No, that's not him. He just looks like that guy. Wait, is T Rash here? There he is. There he is. Dude, T Rash, if that's you, you got to write the book. Write the book, man. <laughs> uh, Cody. Cody C. Uh, Ten bucks. He has nothing to say. Thanks, Cody C. Uh, scrolling, scrolling. Th uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, <clears throat> here, yeah, Torgo uh, wanted the Thug Notes analysis of George Orwell. Orwell's 1984 is one for the eight. Yeah, if you guys are here. Okay, let me tell you this. This has nothing to do with his performance. I hated reading. I still hate reading. I don't like writing, but Aaron, you're an author. Doesn't mean I like it. So I always told my mama, you ever get this from your mom? Mom, I'm bored. Well, why don't you read a book? Why don't I put a like like a bullet in my kneecap? What I said I'm bored. I want to be more bored. So you that's why I meant boys would go out and play. 
for whatever reason, your mom's all thought a good solution to boredom was to read a book. And on any old book, things like 1984 and um, what's the one where the woman writes too much? Uh, uh, Atlas Shrugged. And uh, my mom always wanted me to read this and read Lord of the Rings and like it, books like this. And I'm like, well, won't they just make a movie out of it? Nah, you can't make the movie. Movie is it the same? Well, sure enough, they ended up making movies out of all these books I didn't have to read. And I saved decades of my life reading. <clears throat> and all the literists come in. Oh, you know, it's not the same as the book. Yeah, but I don't have to spend 17 hours reading Atlas Shrugged. I, I got it. I got the thing. I got the gist. I know the plot. I don't have to read that now. You missed out so much on Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but I know what happened. I got the thing. They did the thing with the volcano when they threw the, the, the thug notes is the same way. He tackles pretty serious books. You know, they're, these aren't, you know, Lord, uh, 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 War and Peace, <clears throat> Crime and Punishment, 1984. So if you just want the gist of it in a digestible, entertaining way, just binge on thug notes. Because all you need is the takeaway, right? And let's say we still went to fancy parties where having an intellectual conversation meant something. If you binged on Thug Notes and just took a couple notes from Thug Notes and then you went to some hoity-toity thing where they're sipping tea with their pinky up, oh my goodness, did you read A Brave New World? You didn't have to read Brave New World. You got the Cliff Notes version from Thug Notes. You say, ah, yes, the thing with the point and the stuff with the observation of the protagonist. Oh my God, he's well-read like us. Let's sip our tea together. So, yeah, if you ever want to, like, you know, get a quick cultural education, go binge on Thug Notes. Uh, the American, uh, the ancient man, <clears throat> five bucks. Jeez, I didn't know the percentage of marriage success was 1.5%. Thanks for the info. It, it's not. That's why you, you really do have to read the book because right now the percentage of women as they stand between the ages of 18 and 35, only 1.5% are considered marriage material. That does not mean your chances are 1.5% because you're also part of the equation and the amount of effort and work you put into building yourself has an effect on achieving that 1.5%. So that's, it, it's not, I mean, yeah, the statistics are good. The, the punchy statistics are good to know like that, but you really do need to have them in the right context. So please go get that book, The Book of Numbers. Um, but yeah, that there's another thing. Like that statistic where you could pull from that without context is, guys, don't go sign a loan to stand a 1.5% chance of finding a unicorn. All right? You shouldn't be busting your ass off. Don't be working those 60, 70 hours a week for a 1.5% chance. Put yourself first. Get your own financial act together. And having a hoodang diggly double wise Jimmy John diesel truck, it, it ain't going to help your chances. Uh, Vegabond 1983. J What's a J-O-D? Jamaican dollar? Let's see what a J-O-D is. Jordanian dinar. Oh, okay. I was way off. Um, Jordanian dinar. What is it? Oh, wow. That's above the U.S. That's like eight bucks you gave me. One Jordanian dinar will buy 1.4 U.S. dollars. Interesting. I didn't know Jor uh, Jordania had uh, that, uh, that powerful or high-end currency. Uh, if you have a phantom and you don't have personality, the girls will spit in your face and leave. Is there a fan? Wait, what's a phantom? Phantom car. Oh, Rolls Royce. Oh, that does look like a fancy car. Um, if you have a phantom and you don't have the girls that would spit in your face and leave. Really? Over in Jordan? What that's that's different ball game over there. I got some buddies in Morocco and they talk about how all the Emiratis in Dubai have all the money and they get all the all the girls want to go to Dubai because that's where the rich guys are and the party is. It's like, I guess girls are kind of universal no matter where you go, huh? All these poor guys in Marrakesh, all the Moroccan girls want to go over to Dubai. It's like, what's wrong with the Moroccan guys? Oh, they're not Emiratis with their phantoms. 
<clears throat> that seems to be a car the rich Middle Easterners would buy. I see, I see a lot of Saudi princes driving that type of car. Be tall, young, and attractive. Two bucks. Why are women initiating most divorces? They're not that interested in men. They're interested in marriage. Okay, they're interested in a wedding. They're not that interested in marriage and, and, and a husband. Another book to go get is the is the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. Please go get that. I mean, a couple key things that ultimately leads into the, the pointless purchase of these vehicles. The percentage of marriageable women in the United States is very low. The women also are not that interested in you guys. They're just not. They're interested more so only in the top 5% of guys. And a lot of, and I'd be curious why women get married in the first place here in the United States. I think it's out of tradition. I know talking to one woman, I know it's anecdotal. It's like family gives them a lot of pressure. Women are under incredible pressure to have children, but they don't pick the guy they want. It's always like they waited too long or, you know, and let's admit it, it is exactly like you guys are on the, the track to become Ward Cleaver, become marriage material yourself. You're all living at home collecting student loan bailouts. The sexes have been ruined for each other by the Democrat Party. True. Um, so then out of the not right reasons, women get married. And I also say genetically, honestly, brass tacks, women just don't have that much interest in men. And what kept men and women together was necessity. Women needed men to get by. Now they don't need you. And now marriage is really more treated like going steady. It'll last a couple of years, but you get divorced. Have come on, guys. I mean, it, don't don't listen to what the normies, conformies, and inferiors say. Marriage is a hollowed institute. It's very important. You get married. No, it is not. Not with the fifty percent failure rate. Anything with a fifty percent failure rate is a failure. Because you might as well gamble and flip a coin. You're gonna have the same. You might, literally, might as well go play roulette. Why are we? Because they just don't want marriage that much. They want a wedding. They're pressured into it. But when it ultimately boils down to it, they don't want to be married that much. I mean, it only serves you guys to be the best version you can be because then your wife would probably be less prone to divorce you. But I wouldn't say don't get married, period. Like we will have an arrangement. Well, we could be like the Romans. I even think the Swedes do this where we have an agreement for a certain period of time. It's a contract. I would say it's a verbal contract, but under no circumstances do you get married. Like we can stay together. You can have your own place. I'll have my own place. And at any point in time, you can leave. But we're not soaring in front of God and the government that we're going to honor some vows that only 50% of the time you have an intention of keeping. It's just no. It's it's dumb. It's as dumb as going to going getting married in the United States is as dumb as going to college now. It, it only works about 50% of the time, and college is even worse. <laughs> Why are women initiating most divorces? Because they want to. There, there's your short answer. Shaft-driven metal, five bucks. Women are just a headache, Cappy. Much rather play the Gundam game that dropped yesterday. Oh. That was a reasonably popular anime if you get your hands on it in the 90s. I never, never watched it. Because I was going to the school, sir. So. All right, there you go. Well, thank you for all the super chats. Today's super chats, they were going to go to gas to Montana, but um, then I then I screwed up my foot. So today it'll go to, I don't need anything. That's the thing. I, I'm a minimal. I mean, it, it, I guess it's going to go to retirement savings. I, it's going to go to, I bought some ammo yesterday. Uh it was one of those days, like when you got an injured foot, like, what am I going to do? Nothing is what you're going to, you can't do anything. <clears throat> I don't know. Go to, it'll go to Jimmy John. I guess today's, today's donations go to Jimmy John's and the rest goes to retirement planning. Flat highway, five bucks. I once dated a girl who was an atheist, but she still wanted to get married in a church. Right, right. It, women want weddings and they want children. They want to have children and get married. They do not want to be wives and mothers. It is the concern. They, you guys want fancy cars. You don't want the payment. Everyone wants the benefits. No one wants the responsibilities. It, it's vain. It's vanity. It's, 
Look at that mentality. You think that person is mature enough to get married? I mean, okay, anyone's mature enough to get married. You think that person is mature enough to be a spouse? I mean, I don't believe in God, but I'm going to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sully, I'm going to um, not desanctify. I'm going to, I guess Sully would be the word. I'm going to mock, <clears throat> degrade this church by using it, even though I have no beliefs in the God that the institution was founded around. Um, mock, ridicule, lesson. Defile. That's the word. I'm going to defile this church. That's what I was looking for. I'm going to defile this institution. Play make believe Christian girl because she wanted it to be in a church. That's someone you don't marry. <laughs> it's just... Bless me. That that that's a good one too. Thank you, Goo Monster. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right, that's it. <clears throat> um, I might have some videos later today, but can't be going to shower. Can't be going to go to the gyms. Uh. You guys have fun on Friday. Actually, I know you guys probably got school and work that you do on your own terms. But hey, for everyone that that hey, dude, why don't you loosen up and get a car? Why do you live in a basement? Loosen up, Clary, for all my friends. And they're good people. For all my friends that said that 20, 25 years ago. Hey, how you guys doing? Have fun at work. I wonder what you're going to. Where should you go for lunch for the half an hour that your little slave master lets you go? Oh, I remember that. I remember those days. Like, oh, I got to leave for lunch. I got to make it back. Otherwise, I'll be gone for 32 minutes. Oh, and I hope all my boomer bosses. I, I can't say what I hope. YouTube would not approve. But you can imagine. Imagine it's 10 times worse than that. All right. See you guys later. Oh, link below. Take the course. It's only open for another, whatever, couple days. And then I don't know when it comes. I'm going to try and have it come back, but uh, on a regular schedule and basis. But you know me. All right. I'll see you guys later.